This conference will now be recorded. Uh, hi, everybody. Nice to meet you all. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, our meeting today is going to be with uh, Mr. Jason, Jason Paul. Um, he's from the United States. Um, to be sure, you are from New York? Yes, sir. Yeah. He is an industrial design champion and brand ambassador for SaltWorks. And he is also work, he was work for um, uh, Orange uh, Chopper. Uh, hi, Jason. How, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. So, so guys, um, our agenda today, um, we are excited to know about uh, Jason Paul, uh, Paul and his experience using Saltbox and 3D experience platform. And after that, he also is going to tell us about the competition, um, Arm for All. And at the end, uh, we're going to have like some question and answering. So feel free, don't hesitate yourself to, in order to ask any question. And okay, let me stop my screen share and make you a presenter. There we go. All right. Okay. Uh, well, th thanks, Mohammed, for having me on. It's super, super awesome to be here and and to, to showcase everything that I got going on. And and I'm just thrilled to be, you know, participating with you guys. All right. So thank you for that. And uh, yeah, today's pretty laid back. Okay. <laughs> it's not going to be your traditional PowerPoint uh, uh, slideshow or presentation. It's just really about getting to know me and understanding my workflow and, and being able to bounce back and forth uh, with, with the craziness that goes through my head and the different uh, tools that I use uh, to be a successful designer, okay? Uh, every day I try to, to educate myself, to be a little bit smarter, a little bit uh, savvier with the equipment and the tools. Uh, so that I can, you know, be a better designer. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm I'm in my home office right now, and and that is in uh, Walk Hill, New York, and I uh, I have all the tools here in my my home office design studio uh, that help make me be successful. Okay, I got a Tormach uh, 1100 MX CNC machine. Uh, it's what I do a lot of prototyping on. Uh, whenever I model something, I'm able to put a G code to it and actually cut it on the CNC machine. Uh, mostly use aluminum. Um, so I do a lot of different uh, like championship belts. Um, and some you may have recognized uh, WWE uh, is a is the wrestling uh, outfit that I that I do all I do all their championship belts. I'm, Sure, you guys have seen it uh, before, and uh, I also uh, work with uh, work for Dassault Systems. I'm on the adoption team, and yeah. So this is my family. Like I said, we live in upstate New York. We're about two hours from New York City. Uh, live up here in in the mountains <laughs> uh pretty much isolated you know uh but but we love it uh we got good schools here and uh that's uh that's my family my wife crystal my son maxton uh kipton cashton and emerson our, our baby girl and this is uh this is lexi and izzy izzy's uh grown quite a bit since this photo this photo was taken about four or five months ago but yeah, I call I call my three boys Huey, Dewey, and Louie. <laughs> okay, and uh, so yeah, my my purpose on the adoption team for 3D Experience Works at Tasso Systems is I want to champion the the industrial designers and show them what tools are out there, uh, and also inspire them to to create and continue to design. Okay. 
Um, before I worked at SolidWorks and with Dassault Systems, uh, I did work at Orange County Choppers, and that was in Rock Tavern, New York. And we had a television show on uh, Discovery Channel uh, called American Chopper. So I, I got to work with some really amazing people and had all this awesome technology and tools to be able to use. And some of our clients were absolutely world class. So I'm just gonna play this quick, uh, quick, uh, like two, three minute video of my my life at OCC. Just kind of, just kind of edited up. Um, kind of shows my workflow there and in what what I was responsible for for doing. Um, I worked there 16 years, and you know, just ha had a blast doing it. You know, it was a really fun job but it was really demanding at the same time. There was a lot of pressure to constantly create and develop new new tools and, and new, new motorcycles and new ways of, of doing things. Um, when I was there, I, uh, I really, uh, I kind of adopted uh, a CNC machine shop <laughs> while I was there. So I really taught myself how to program in G-code and take my 3D models out of SolidWorks and into the actual motorcycles and at different times you know i had an amazing team that i got to work with um but yeah so a lot of fun a lot of different uh corporate bikes a lot of celebrity bike builds from muhammad ali to the guys on the time bandit that's us in alaska there uh pretending to catch a uh, crab <laughs> but yeah These are some of uh, my favorite bikes uh, that I got to design while I was working there. And that's a glimpse of some of the, the sketches, uh, the concept sketches before, uh, a lot of times before I have, I work in 3D space, I'm, I draw up kind of what, what I'm thinking and, and play with different shapes. So Very yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a quick, uh, a quick, uh, you know, history, you know, a little, a little history lesson of me. And, and mm -hmm. a lot of that footage was borrowed from, from the TV show and, and some of it I captured myself, but, uh, it's just a quick, you know, glimpse of, uh, my 16 years there and the moments that, that, that stood out, but, but really it was the people that I was surrounded with that, you know, those relationships that I forged and, and every day at work, I took, I took that as an opportunity, uh, to, to learn something new. Um, you know, whether it was, uh, Ricky Jr. Teaching me how to TIG weld or, you know, Jim Quinn teaching me how to run and operate a CNC machine. Uh, it was, it was always something new. And, and that's how I like to look at life every day it's an opportunity to build something and make something because that's what I want to do. You know, uh, I, I started off life uh, doing animations. I was an animator for a video game company, uh, right, right, right after college. And I realized quickly that I wanted to, to be more of a maker and construct things with my hands and, and be able to build stuff. And I've always been able to, to lean on the technology and discover new ways of making things uh, that that offer more precise methods to, to the madness. And uh, SolidWorks is what really opened my eyes to having the power. It delivered the ultimate power of how something is made and, and developed. So I've been a super, super big SolidWorks fan since 2004. 
And now to be part of the team, it's really a dream come true for me. I can help mold and, and, and shape the future of, uh, of design and the tools that these future designers and engineers are gonna use. And you know, I, I apply my experience with, with, with how to make it even that much better of an experience for, for the users. So uh, a few of the things that really got me exciting are uh, that the X apps, like X design and X shape. And I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of that real quick. I'm gonna dip into, uh, here, let's just, let's jump right in the, right in the X shape, okay? So this is obviously, this is uh, subdivisional surface modeling, but it's just so much fun because it happens so quick. Um, it's just, it's right here. You're able to truly push it around like, uh, like digital clay, okay? So if I just wanted to extend this whole, this whole thing, I can, and I can just push and pull and whatever I, whatever happens to one side happens to the other because I do have, I have it set to mirror. Okay. So, you know, I could do something really crazy here, <laughs> you know? but uh, yeah, so this is, this is a lot of fun uh, to come in here and create this and let's see what else I got here. Let's dip into here. So this is a, a monster truck that, that I modeled in, in X shape and Sean O'Neill did the body and and I did the tires and wheels and put it together in this makeshift assembly over here. But uh, just just a good experience because I got to actually make that, you know, and I made it here on our, our home 3D printer. And and this is this is the outcome of it. And this originally was a different monster truck. It was one of my boys' toys. And I had decided to hook it up for him. And that was a lot of fun working on that, you know. So and then another thing that 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 I'm blessed with is I, I get to make all the championship belts for WWE, and uh, this is this is one of the models. Uh, each each one of these is a a cubic zirconia stone that gets placed in there, and uh, this is a this is a sample of just the stones and uh, the actual belt. So that gets CNC milled right there, and then I do a heat treating process and inform it and then it get it goes off to chrome and gold plating and gets uh, epoxy inlaid and then the stones all get set by by andrew at wildcat so it's it's just a fun process but it's just one of the ways that one of the many many ways that that i use solidworks um to to create parts uh, i often i often find myself using solidworks for like at home projects like I, I laid out my whole shop here uh, using SolidWorks and a, just basically a giant assembly. I modeled, you know, all, all the cabinets and the desks and everything so I could get a good layout for, for my workflow in my studio here. So, yeah. And you know what? Um, I am going to do some live modeling later, but here, let I want to show you a project that I, I just finished up for my friends at, at Flex CNC. Um, this is... Uh, SolidWorks visualize, okay? And this is groundbreaking for, for how fast you're able to develop uh, a, a really polished high-end rendering. And I, I have a picture of this in, in the slideshow later, all rendered up, but this is running on a, a whole bunch. I think I got like 23,000 CUDA cores uh, from NVIDIA that, that are powering this. So it's rendering right before your eyes. And I mean, this is a this is like a 5K <laughs> or 6K render, but like, look, I can I can easily make this, uh, you know, red. I don't know why I'd want to do that, but I did. <laughs> and I can I can chrome out the stand, you know, because you know if you're gonna if you're gonna have one of these, why why would you just get a chrome stand and chrome out the monitor? <laughs> so it's just really cool. I mean, you can see how fast the reflection is is kicking in down here and you have like so much power and able to uh, adjust the scene as far as lighting and, and textures and you know decals and and shaders and all, all this good stuff that you can do to it but at the same time you can you can model it and animate you can animate inside it 
but you can actually just apply shaders that are already made. So it saves a lot of time uh, just creating these, these quick renders. And it's just really, really cool software package that you should definitely check out if you haven't already. But I can adjust the cameras, you know, like the perspective and the focal point. Uh, I can blur out, give it depth of field, uh, just different things. So uh, Mike Sandy is the one that that taught me this, and uh, I, I learned a little bit from Chris Mowat too. But uh, it's it's great because you have all these opportunities to learn online right now. So uh, yeah, check that out. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is uh, I'm not sure if you guys got to check out my presentation at Worlds this year. But I just talked a little bit about my workflow. I don't want to get into this too much because I do want to be able to do some live modeling and I want to make sure we have enough time for questions and answers at the end here. But uh, so my first phase is the understand phase, okay, and the orange phase right here, okay. I'm I'm a designer, so I had to I had to draw out my thoughts when you know so people ask me all the time about my workflow, so I really wanted to get this out there and hopefully other industrial designers can benefit from it or maybe it sparks something that takes you to the next level okay so number one understand understand what you're doing why are you doing this why are you creating this um is it entertaining for you to create something is it got a purpose in life are you selling it do you have different expectations are there rules are there specs that you have to meet uh, it's time in the understanding phase to learn and understand what you're doing. And the most important thing is probably to just listen. Listen to what uh, what the problem is before you jump to the solution. Really understand what the problem is and what the need is. And you, you have to find the invisible problem that no one else can can see. Because as designers, we're 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 constantly forced in these <laughs> positions. It's never easy, you know. You have to come up with the solution, and this is the time to get motivated and understand what motivates you to to do this project in the first place. Okay, uh, the next phase in the blue phase here is the concept phase. Uh, this is this is the time to become incredibly brave and forget everything that you've been taught. Forget specs, forget dimensions, and what's going to work and not work. And just start throwing ideas down. Uh, create, you know, uh, anything, you know. And the way I get through it is through conceptual sketching, throwing a bunch of really bad ideas down, and then weed out those bad ideas. So this is where, you know, failing is designing. Okay, so you just keep designing it and, and throwing ideas out there, even if they're so obnoxious and absurd that you would never do that. You just keep doing it. And, and that's when you're going to have some breakthroughs, okay? And the next phase is design, okay? And this is where I have a lot of fun. Um, you, re, you, you take out some of the designs you've done, you refine them, you create them in 3D space. And when I'm in that phase, I find things that I didn't find on the drawing, you know, on the tablet or on the sketchbook. I find things like, oh, wow, if I just add a, a variable fillet here this this turns into a really badass part you know <laughs> or if i i change the slope here or, or i i do an extrude here but put, put a pocket here this is where you start to you know push that idea a little bit more and you throw away the bad ideas and you get some feedback from your from your your peers your boss your client and and you really you go all the way back to the first one which is up here and understand and you listen from that feedback and you just try to constantly make it better and sometimes you have to be your own your own boss when you're designing and not listen to the to the other influences if you truly want to treat, achieve something great you know sometimes it's when to block out <laughs> when sometimes it's good to not listen to okay <laughs> so this is also a time to create visual renderings What's this part look like in wood? What's this part look like in aluminum, carbon fiber? And that's the great thing. You can jump into tools like Visualize. Bam, you see what color it is. You know, because color defines a lot, man. You know, you you know sometimes 
that's what it's about at different times. It's not the shape, it's the color, it's the texture, it's how it was made. Is it is it injected uh, plastic injection? You know, is it milled? You know, there's all these different things to to think about. And then you jump into the final phase, which is called the create phase. And I think I like this one the best because you're like actually throwing chips, you're making something, you're carving something, you're you're creating, okay? So th this is when you prototype it, you 3D print it, you test it, you use it. Um, if it is something that you can use every day, you know, you put it through the ringer, so to speak, you, you use it, okay? Um, and another point is uh, a design is never truly finished. Um, it's just like a painting. There isn't, there isn't an artist in the world that has created a painting and just been like, I'm done, take it away. You know, it's, it's one of those things. You can always go back and you can always tweak and you can always tweak and tweak and change it and modify it. In a lot of companies, that's what they do. You know, you get version one, you get version two, you get version three. And that's what makes design so much fun is that it's always evolving it's always creating it's never really finished you know it's not you know when when someone does your taxes at the end of the year it's like there's a start middle and end yep it's been submitted it's over or or something like that you know so it's like reading a book you know you read the book and you get to the last page it's over but with design it's never truly over so that's uh that's that's my phases right there and how I break things down and uh, yeah, so this is just a slide of, you know, understand, concept, okay, back into design, and then kick it out with the create process, okay? This is me heating up a championship belt for a client of mine, ABC Supply, and just really heating it up before, before I roll it. Okay, so... This is a quick project I'm just gonna touch on real quick. Uh, this is something that that I, I I had a need for in life and wanted to want to make a wallet that was more streamlined and could go in and out of my pocket that would hold like my driver's license, my insurance card, my credit cards, my debit card, my bank card, things like that. Uh, just about 20 cards is what I needed to hold. So I did what's called an art board here with uh, other ones that are on the market, which are great. And then this river rock, which I was really drawn to, and this this bowl had a nice shape to it. And, and I needed it to fit in my pocket. So I wanted to take this old wallet right here, this brown one with all the receipts and silliness. And so I started sketching up different ideas. And this is the concept phase where I'm just throwing a bunch of ideas down, going for broke. And a lot of these are dumb, but it's okay because usually they won't see the light of day unless you're doing a presentation. <laughs> it's like, usually you just, you turn the page, you throw one down, you turn the page, you keep going. Uh, a lot of times I like to sketch like on top of a photo, like this is my bank card and I'm sketching on it uh, just to get the, the shape just right, you know, the ergonomic feel of it. And then I, then I decided, you know, to throw away all of those designs and just do the simplest thing that I could. So I, I came up with just this air blip, you know, just this, this very smooth, organic card holder. I did a quick animation in inside Visualize to get my point across. I lock it with really strong magnets so it snaps back into place. I call it the snapback. And, you know, I was, I was able to use all the tools that that I know uh, basically started with X shape with a simple shape, jumped into SolidWorks, uh, threw some extruded cuts in there, you know, and threw a couple baby fillets on it, and then bam, went into visualize, and uh, then I was able to prototype it out. Um, I made one out of aluminum, which I do need to take a little bit more weight off of it because once once I started using it, it was a little heavy. Um, little awkward, but the plastic one on the 3D printer, man, that, that's still the one that I rock to, to this day. Uh, just was able to print it out. And for this one, I did take a, an old Trimec box and I cut it out and uh, just did like uh, some paper templates, you know, to make sure my size was right and to make sure the, the draw pulling out of my pocket was right. Um, here's another artboard for uh, a company I work with. 
they they wanted basically this giant CNC machine to reflect the, the SR seventy one uh, uh, jet. So <laughs> so I took some of those elements, poured it into some concept sketches, and on some of the cabinetry, and changed the color of the machine and and just enhanced it to make it look more like that. Here's another concept I did for the same company. Um, I really like the idea of the door sliding up instead of opening up like traditional machines. Uh, get it out of its way. And there's a finished rendering of, of the Flex Jet. This is from uh, Flex CNC. So this can be used for marketing and, and for purposes because it's kind of hard to get studio shots of a giant of a giant uh, water jet <laughs> you know what i mean so so this uh this serves that purpose and it's it's photorealistic rendering and it, i think it looks great this is kind of the workflow uh real quick for the the slug me six car um i got to work with you know jordan tadich and andy barnes and and a whole bunch of and Shreyas and a whole bunch of awesome people um, to, to pull this off. But the, 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 the start of it was just I, I, I assembled a bunch of pictures that, that motivated me and inspired me. Uh, I really like the Stingray. Uh, you know, a lot of times when I work on different things, I, I, I do apply nature to, to my designs in different, different times. Uh, over here, I went into X shape and, and really had a good time modeling a bunch of different cars. And this is the visualized render I worked on with Chris. All right, so uh, yeah, so I think right now I want to jump in and do some some live modeling if you guys are good with that. Um, so this is X shape, and I'm gonna start with a box because it makes sense, right? A box. Yeah, I'm going to start with a box. I love this chair up here in the upper right. It lets me know which direction it's going. It just makes sense to me. Um, so I'm going to get lined up with that. Turn on my mirror tool. So obviously, whatever I do on the one side, I do to the other side. And uh, yeah, this is this is the time. Like you guys can you can ask questions or you know whatever we want. I'm just going to do some quick modeling because. It's something I really like to do, and I just want to share with you guys how I go about, you know, modeling in, in X shape. You know, I thought it'd be fair to show some live modeling. All right. So uh, I've been uh, <clears throat> I've been dog sitting for my sister in law, and she has a German Shepherd. So I think I'm going to model right now a german shepherd okay there it's just a dog that kind of looks like a wolf but it's not there go just split the vertices there added a whole row for me go so I start with a box but already it's not really looking like a box you know it's still still a little boxy here in the back but uh what what's amazing about x shape is just about everything but like i'm able to grab these vertices or i can grab the edges or i can grab the entire surface and i can scale non-uniform or uniform and i can rotate as well so you're able to get shapes uh very fast with uh you know I'm just gonna kind of, and I'm not using many tools. I'm using just like three or four. Like this is an extrude tool, and it's like, oh my goodness, what's happened? This is not good. But I'm just, I'm gonna fix it, you know. So I just take it, 
and I'm going to scale it this way. I'm going to drag it in this way. And then I'm going to take and suck these ears back in. So we have like a, like an ear canal, you know, I'm just, I'm just slowly pushing it in. I'm, okay. I'm in screen, uh, screen mode. Um, I just like that mode because it adapts to where, where I'm going, you know, and it helps create more of an organic feel within the model. It, it won't be so perfectly uniform like a box, you know? So that's one, one feature that I like inside X shape. And I'm just, you know, pushing this ear canal around. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, so I'm gonna, I know, I know German shepherds have like a, a pointier ear. So I'm gonna cut, try to, try to do that shape. And, you know, I'm just having fun pushing, pushing and pulling these, uh, these things. And they're, I mean, they'll machine just like any surface. It, it's a, it's a beautiful surface. It's, D2 surface continuity all the way. And, you know, I can add creases to it if 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 need be, but uh, just kind of going for it, you know. And, you know, I'm not really sure what German Shepherds look like. <laughs> you know, if like, if I was really getting after it, I'd probably have a drawing or a uh, a photo would be great in the background, you know, but like, we're not going absolutely crazy. We're only going halfway crazy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm gonna extrude out, you know, his neck here. And I can really just start going for it, you know, pull this out. This, 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 this extrude. Yeah. Still a little boxy from like this angle, and that's okay. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get there, but like I'm gonna bring this in. And it, it's really it's all about proportions, you know, like what what looks right, you know, and and that's that's just kind of pushing these around and and trying to get get a good feel for what you got going on. And, and of course, I'm gonna add some more, I'm gonna insert some more uh, verts there. Okay. Yeah, for sure. It's really organic. Yeah, yeah, it's smooth. And like, it's amazing, like to me, like just being being in the software world for so for so long and, and relying on it for, for work. It's just amazing to see something that works so fast. You know, like yeah, we, yeah. I actually face a, a lot of difficulties using uh, surfacing. Yeah, yeah. So this is a proper and fast way in order to make like cool shapes. Yeah, and like I mean, you could apply this to more industrial design, like with like a remote control or something. You know, I'm just choosing to model like this German Shepherd because it's been on my mind lately, and it, it I think it show it showcases how quick you're able to pop out like these shapes that otherwise you know are pretty complex you know like a lot of my surface modeling like when I would do a gas tank or anything organic like that before before I knew about these tools I would do in 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 SolidWorks and I would do with like surface lobs and it it would get pretty crazy at different times with with guide curves shooting off all over and 3D sketches going this way and that way, you know? So, but like something like this, it's just been, it's been very nice. Now here's the crease tool. It's yeah. pretty simple. I can crease it. It's got a threshold to it. So I can do a baby crease or I'm just gonna jack it all the way. So it, it gives me like this flat crease right here, okay? And I'm able to just kind of take it and, and bring it down. There we go. So we got like a start of, of like a leg, you know, and yeah. I'm going to add another surface right here, just splitting these and then I'm control clicking. And again, I can, I can double click if I want to select like a whole loop. 
like watch this i double click and it's smart enough to know that i want that whole thing you know and then i can can drag this down i think we're going to go down a little bit with all this it's a little high german shepherds are like lower in the in the rear end there yeah uh, they they like they're almost like they look like the right like a low rider car you know they're like they're like low in the back or something so we're gonna try to get this going sorry if i click a little fast i'm just like this isn't a how-to or anything this is just a how to have fun type thing <laughs> uh, never mind. yeah so um I'm gonna bring this down do this again split it bam okay bring this over here i'm going to crease that again so it's flat at the bottom i can always work in more detail later like pause and stuff but we're just going for the overall body here and just seeing like how how this develops control click drag down Oh, getting a little out of hand here. It's okay. It's all good. Drag it back over. So they have like this hind leg thing that goes up. There we go. start a tail you know what I don't, I don't think i want the tail there i think i want the tail down here let's see boom there's a tail yeah i really like that chair up there i know that sounds silly but i like you know everyone knows what a chair is and i know which direction it's going it's going that way see the chair and then the top, it's like, oh, wow, it's still very boxy on the top, but we'll fix that. Let's get yeah. this going down here. Uh, let's do another. We better do another extrusion here. Let's pop that out. Come on. There we go. And it's like the, the big moves that you can make. You know what I mean? Like to, to modify something like this used to take like some really – some more skill and, and finesse, but like I can do like these big obnoxious moves and it's just, it's so chaotic and I, I'm just so impressed that the software handles it, you know? Yeah. But here, let's go, let's make this, this dog uh, is looking a little boxy. So let's, uh, let's add some swoops to it here. Just gonna bring up just this one. There's a tail. All right. so. Bring this guy down. Yeah. Let's bring this. We got to get that shoulder going. You know, they got like these broad shoulders. Going to kind of rotate. See this this circle edge here and this edge? Those are rotates. So I'm just rotating that whole surface. And it just seems like, like it's so unnatural for the software to be able to do that. <laughs> it's, it's like... Yeah. It just does it, you know, and it's what's so pretty cool. Yeah, so I'm just gonna add another layer there, kind of getting in here and getting this these shoulders to to kind of pop out a little bit. But now I'm just gonna go up top and do the same with this because I feel like this is another area that like their hips kind of come out a little bit. They kind of shoot out. So you know what? I started with a box and it was pretty it was pretty simplistic in the approach it was just a box i just started pushing and pulling and and we're starting to get like some more shape you know and we're adding we're adding more detail as we go we don't start with a bunch of detail because it would just get confusing then you know um well for me anyways yeah so because, go, yeah it's a good way in order to use a design intent What's that? Yeah, uh, talk about design intent. It's a good way. Right. Yeah. Right.
Um, right in the neck, it's looking like a little, little strange right here. I'm going to see what this does. Okay, that just added more, added a whole nother run. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to try to bring this down. We need like a little bit more neck and shoulders. Like, I feel like it's more like a hyena right now. Yeah. With, with that thick, you know, that really thick neck. neck and yeah. I, think, I think we can just kind of balance that out by, by dragging this around. But you know that's all that all comes down to proportions and like reference material you know to do this the right way you would you would want like uh i guess uh a picture of the the german shepherd you're trying to model you know but yeah needs a little bit more in the face here Bring the neck in. There we go. Maybe that'll do it. Yeah, that does a lot, a little bit more. Uh, it's still a little straight, a little rigid, you know. I'm gonna bring this. There we go. Yeah, seems to be cool now. It's looking better, right? It's like yeah. it's getting there, and like, you know, this is obviously got to have more of a bushy. They got like this real bushy tail that rides real low too, you know. It actually stays close to their body. I noticed it's not. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, they went to Disney World, so uh, I'm watching the dog for them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, they'll return the favor if I ever go anywhere. But I, I'm usually home. I'm usually here in the office. You know, with the kids being little, we don't we don't travel a whole lot. You know. So it, it's it's kind of nice being here. Yeah, it's peaceful, you know. Okay, now I'm gonna see how like this this looks more like a horse's butt. I'm gonna kind of slope this down. Don't don't like German shepherds. Kind of like they ride like weird. They they whoa whoa hello, calm down now, come on now, whoa. Yeah, let's just do this. Yeah, it's walking up. Yeah, right. Like slope. It's got like a slope to it. Um. Oh yeah, and this is way too straight. Like this leg, you know, it's way too perfect. So I'm gonna add another, another section in here. There we go. And I can kind of disrupt this pattern a little bit, so it's just a little bit more. And then I guess like. The last thing that I would probably do is turn off. Uh, I'd probably turn off like. Uh, wow, this is looking weird. Let's fix this. How do we fix this? Let's slide this over. Slide this up. Yeah, so there's a there's a German Shepherd. Well, we'll call it Charlie because that's their their name of their German Shepherd. So. Here's Charlie. All right. And the last thing I would probably do is turn off symmetry. Okay. And, you know, you could add pause too. But if I'm going to go in the front here and look at this, yeah, I'm going to turn symmetry off right down here. And now I'm going to rock like this foot, this leg back a little bit. Like, I'm going to rotate it because that's how it would be in real life. Just a quick little rotate. And then this thing, he's in mid, she's in mid stride here. So we're going to bring this up. You know, she's going, she's going to the store. Okay. <laughs> going for a walk and we'll bring one of these up. And then we could leave that one there. We'll put it back a little. And I'm just just balancing it out here with a little bit of a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Go up to the top, uh, grab this edge, bring it in, bring it over, bring it under. Still look like a tail, sure, sure, right? Drop this. Let's 
So the last thing I like to do when I'm modeling is like look at it in perspective mode. Okay, so you have to go to view, you got to select uh, view modes and then hit perspective. Okay, and this will kind of, you know, show us what it's going to look like more in real life, you know. Yeah, still got still got some issues with this shoulder. <laughs> it's it's a little a little big, but it's not it's not too bad. But it could get better, you know, by by finessing it and working it and get, getting that shoulder blade to kind of pop or, or or sink back in. And the neck has a little bit of something going on. There we go. Pull this out. Um, yeah, I'd say uh, I'd say we did it. You know, what what do you guys think? Does it look like a? Does it look like we got a German Shepherd here? Let's see. I'm gonna turn these turn these planes off so they're not in our face. And yeah, let's uh let's take the we can change it to gray shiny plastic. Here we go. We got a hood ornament now. You know, Muhammad, this could be for your new car. Yes, here you go. Get this, get this on the the hood ornament there. Mm -hmm. uh, I like modeling in the clay. I like the different light that it gives me, uh, but also just the basic is cool. Um, but yeah, I like I like also you know I find myself a lot of times working like with like you know this this darker background too. Dark review, I think it is. But yeah, it changes. You can change the interface. Uh, that fits your you know like sometimes like with, at night i'll model like with like this this dark view and then like during the day if it's sunny out i'll i'll, I'll stay i'll stay on like this this white background you know it's it's kind of funny but yeah so so i wanted to share that with you guys uh you know that's a that's the power of x shape now you could you could totally pop this right into right into solidworks and you know do do your sweep cuts add add a, like anything to it like if you want to put a dog collar on it or something and you could like you could do like a 3d sketch all the way around the surface and then like revolve that 3d sketch and go back to the traditional uh splines and in in lofts and things like that so yeah we'll save this as charlie there we go boom so yeah this uh back to the presentation real quick if we if we got some more time uh this is a uh, a couple of my favorite uh projects uh this is how one of my favorite projects started on a whiteboard in my office at the time it was a really rough sketch but you could see that the motor how it was hung on to the frame it's like under slung there and Traditionally speaking, we would have like a frame underneath underneath it. So kept that up, went, refined it with a quick pencil sketch. Uh, again, went into the Photoshop and, and colored like in, in exaggerated and, and pushed, you know, that that simple design, you know, so you're seeing the evolution here. Then, then went into SolidWorks and modeled it up and figured out how it was gonna fasten to the bike. Uh, the gas tanks got these, uh, it's like a cross through that goes through the, the frame, uh, rendered it out right here. And I, I rendered this render was, you know, with carbon fiber wheels, carbon fiber exhaust. And I was feeling very carbon fibery that day. And then this is the actual, uh, the actual render of what we ended up making the exhaust, uh, Rick changed the exhaust a lot and for the better, you know and yeah here's a prototype of it uh used wood on the water jet machine and here's the aluminum frame coming together with the mounting system up here uh, it was rubber mounted so it had some flex to it and yeah, here's the, 
here's the finished bike, right? Um, the exhaust was about, I don't know, six inches too long for my liking, but you know, you can't win them all, you know? And a uh, couple of design values, don't grow up, do take it personal, and green light chaos, I always say, okay? And yeah, so innovation is nothing without human imagination. The only progress is human. All right, love it. This is the Arm for All student contest. Uh, it's still open. Um, LN4 and Dassault Systems is looking for an attachment from the limb to the hand. And it's an amazing thing to be part of. Uh, and if you win, uh, there's a whole bunch of really interesting and very cool prizes. And you get 3D Experience SolidWorks for the duration from February 9th to May 9th. So check that out and urge people to do it because it's so cool to be able to change. You really will change someone's life, okay? Uh, it's very powerful stuff to be part of. So check that out at solidworks.com slash arm number four all okay and next week is solidworks live design which uh i never i try to never miss and i'm really looking forward to this one uh because it's it's got my heart you know because i was an animator back in the day so i want to check this out and see see how to animate stuff in solidworks because that is something i've never done so make sure you check that out and feel free to look up my youtube channel um, got a whole bunch of cool content there of, of things that 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 i've done and things i'm currently doing and here's my contact information so it's pooley at uh at pooley on instagram and my email address and you can you can punch my name in on linkedin if we're not already friends uh i hope i hope that you'll reach out to me there and check me out on youtube so yeah, that's uh that's what I got for you guys, and and I'd I'd love to have like uh, some questions or anything you guys have. Go ahead, let's do it. Hey. Okay, guys. If there, uh, anybody had any question? Feel free. Someone asking for the links. No. What was my first design? Is a question I see in the in the thread here. For Muhammad. Yeah. Um, man i you know what it's it's going back to like when i was really little i was probably like i was probably making like uh bird houses in my in my dad's uh workshop you know he had a bench grinder and, oh actually my grandpa at the farm yeah my grandfather had a dairy farm and there was like this uh little work area there and it, it was great because when you went to grandma and grandpa's you could get away with just about anything you know <laughs> so, I was I was literally a kid with like a I got a two by four and I just started grinding it on the bench grinder and I, I turned it into a sword. So uh, I you know I, that's probably one of the first times that like I realized like besides like I always did like paintings and drawings and you know clay sculptures I guess if you if you count those. But uh, the first time I remember making something was you know in my grandfather's workshop and it was definitely a sword like hammered it together and like uh just the smell of the burnt wood on the grinder i was like yeah man this is awesome so that was probably the first thing that that i designed you know so yeah and like i said it's it's design is limitless you know it's it's whatever you want to make it out to be and that that's what i have the most fun because my day-to-day -day, uh could be you know running the cnc laser from laser marking tech it could be uh, milling something out or, you know, it could be painting, it could be drawing, it could be modeling, you know, some something cool in, in 3D space. Um, I have a 3D printer, 
that you know I can print different different designs and ideas on. So what I love about design is probably the the unknown from from day to day, you know. All right. Do do we have any other questions, or do you guys want to see anything else, or? Mm, there's some there's question from you see if he asks you how to start his journey in design uh i don't follow the question what was it again he said how is he how he can start You hear me? Yeah. Uh, how how we can get started? Yeah. Okay. So so the with what with with the career or with the software? The the software. Yeah, I think that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. you can go to SolidWorks.com, and you want to be part of the 3D Experience Works portfolio. Okay. Uh, so. The, the X tools are known as X design and X shape. They're in the 3D sculptor package. Okay, so uh, that's that's what I always look at myself as being first is like a like a digital sculptor. Okay, so uh, yeah, check that out, and yeah. and you won't regret it because like when I when I was first approached with it, I wasn't so sure about it because you know I already I had SolidWorks. I use SolidWorks every day. I still do. It, it, it doesn't replace SolidWorks. It just accentuates it and it adds to it. Um, the ability to do uh, the, the 3D services quickly, um, that, that's where it's at for me inside X-Shape. Like, that, that's why I'm here because I, I think it's amazing, you know, and it's really going to change the design landscape. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And as far as like, I think any industrial designer needs to understand the different materials uh, that they can use, the different tools, um, you know, from, from different types of charcoal pencils that I draw with, to the sketchbooks, the weight of the paper that I draw on, to the, the Wacom Cintiq tablet that I use, and understanding my box technologies workstation and, and how it performs. And then everything down to the different tooling, you know, it, it never stops, you know. Uh, what what type of coating do I want on my on my carbide end mills? Uh, you know, how much coolant, uh, what's my coolant mixture um, that, that goes into the machine? Uh, it, it's all it's all precise stuff. And sometimes you just have to figure it out for yourself. And and I have a lot of fun uh, learning every day and trying to explore those different tools that, that help make me uh, a better designer. So science is involved, okay? <laughs> and, and so is math. You know, I'm just not so sure how sometimes, mm -hmm. but I use math, but I, you know, it's just, it just, just happens, you know? Yeah. Hello. Nice. Hi. Nice meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm asking, I need a roadmap or course in series to master 3D experience. Where can sure. I start? Sure. You you would start at SolidWorks.com and, and, and start with that. And there's also a lot of uh, video content that's still being developed and, and getting released. Uh, I would check out uh, some sources on, on YouTube. Uh, definitely type in Andy Barnes, Andrew Barnes, and Jordan Tadich. They they develop a lot of really good uh, uh, content, and and refer to your your reseller uh, and and tell them your interest in, in pursuing that and, and and getting after it, and they can help you out too. Uh, the great thing about another great thing about it is it's always evolving. The software it's always getting updated and and there's new features added. And, and that, that's been really exciting for me 
to to see that evolve as well just in the short time that that i've been using it um, i picked up uh, x shape probably just over a year ago okay and what i found about it is the tools are pretty friendly you can jump right into it and use it but and and that's the thing it, it's it's a tool it's a tool to to help help you out and that, that's what it's all about you know is making making fun stuff thank you yeah that's a good question So guys, any question? Did someone ask you for, for links for your social media accounts? Um sure. Um I, I can I can I don't really have the links, but I can type in uh I I'll just type them in the in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, so Instagram is Pooley. That's at P O H L I E. It was my nickname growing up. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you know my last name is Pool and you know I, I turned into Pooley somehow. So Check that out. And Jason Pool OCC Twitter uh, is where you can get me on Twitter. And Jason Pool on LinkedIn. It's just my name. Okay. I'm going to show you that all of your link in your. Yeah. Yeah, but please reach out and stay in touch. And, and like, I, I love. Uh, re you know staying in contact with other designers and seeing what they're working on and and i think that's the best thing that's what i like about social media the most is yeah. being able to explore what other people are doing and 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 find inspiration in it you know uh see, see what what other folks are, are working on and making and creating and and that's what it's all about you know it's all about having fun you know i chose this profession and and this lifestyle because I wanted to have fun every day at work and and I, I truly did you know and i still do you know it, it's it, it's exciting for me to to be able to share what i do and to continue to work on fun projects even even if it's just a, a monster truck for for my boys <laughs> in the sandbox you know yeah okay, why <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah i really I really hope to visit Africa one day. It's definitely on my bucket list of places that, that I want to go and experience. And uh, right right now, travel is a little hard for a lot of reasons, but mostly because my family's so young. But uh, it's definitely it's it, it's 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 on it's on the books to go there one day and experience it. So uh, I'm thrilled to be able to to talk to you guys and 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 you know share share what i had here so so it's fun to be able to connect new york to africa uh yeah. you know you know it, it feels like you guys are right here in the shop with me so it's it's really cool really cool experience yeah also thank you so much for your presentation yeah uh, i got to watch, learn uh, all the stuff about 3d experience platform i really like it so uh, I'm gonna take my next step as I take the first with Chris Maud. I learn from you so well, visualize. So also inspire me in order to to learn more uh, about 3D experience platform. I use it in order to implement my design to real world using CNC machines or, or, or other tools for computer element manufacturing system. Great. Yeah. Great. So guys, we're gonna wrap up. Thank you so much, uh, as I said, for Jason Paul for his uh, presentation. Uh, if anybody like um, wanted to get uh, other imp uh, other question, uh, don't hesitate to send it to me. I will reach out to Jason directly. Um, uh, thank you.
Yeah, thanks so much. I had a blast.